Woe to you of earth and sea. Welcome to Satan is My Superhero, a show about art, culture, history, and the devil. I'm your host, Judas Falling. In this episode, we will be investigating the devil's contribution to the world of video games. Satan really is a superhero in the gaming world, and a lot of game companies seem to have a healthy disrespect for religious superstition. For example, in the hilarious fighting game Fight of Gods, you can be Jesus. Kick us, Jesus! Kick us, Jesus! He's gonna kick your... Kick us, Jesus! But the industry does love to borrow the aesthetics and iconography of religion, and we all know when it comes to aesthetics and iconography, Satan beats the rest every time. I work with what I've got. There are a lot of video games featuring the Prince of Darkness and or his many minions. We'll just touch on some of the notable ones in this episode, and there are probably none more notable than Doom. In this science fiction horror epic, a space marine fights demons from and in hell. Many have noticed the inferno level of the game seems to be... In 1992, a five-person team moved into an office they dubbed Sweet 666 and set about creating the most evil, gory and violent first-person shooter ever. And a legend was born. In 2012, Time said the designers of Doom showed a bracing lack of restraint in their deployment of gore and satanic iconography. The series contains Baphomet, portals to hell, a demon apocalypse and a spaceship made of bones, metal and flesh. What's that smell? It's my spaceship. Sorry about that, it's made of flesh. How does that work in space? It has pros and cons. Oh yeah? The con I guess would be every time we enter the vacuum of space, the entire crew dies. But on the flip side, that does provide the material required to plug the holes. Co-designer John Romero said, Everyone of the company was an atheist. We didn't believe in hell or heaven or any of that stuff. By the way, John Romero follows exactly 666 people on Twitter and in 2018 tweeted, Satan is my homeboy. He might not be a believer, but he's certainly a fan. Despite Hollywood's long and fruitful partnership with the Dark Lord, they sidelined Hell and its demons in the movie adaptation of the game. Lead programmer John Carmack said this about the film. My only regret is they didn't play up the satanic Hell aspect. Then it just became a genetic mutation. And it flopped. Just saying. The dicks who committed the Columbine Massacre were known to be Doom players and it was rumoured one of them had created a custom level of the game based on the layout of the school. This mythical custom level has never appeared, but he did write in his journal about Doom and compared his planned shooting spree to the game. Colleen Riley, spokesperson for Christian Mothers Against Violent Video Games, had this to say about the franchise. We believe that the Doom games are a morally bankrupt, depraved piece of pop culture that continues to endanger our children's innocence. I'm sorry, but did anyone else start to zone out as soon as they heard the words Christian, Mothers and Against? Hey, I've got one of my old games from 1993. Do you want to play? What is a 1993? It's a year. Last century? No, I don't want to play a game from 100 years ago. It's been described as morally bankrupt and depraved. Oh, okay, put it on. Podcast regular Pastor Phil Arms wrote a book called Pokemon and Harry Potter, A Fatal Attraction, an expose of the secret war against the youth of America. Oh, I take Pokemon very seriously, and so do my demons. Here's a bit of the blurb from Phil's book. Violence, psychic manipulation, witchcraft, murder, demons, wizards, magic, Satanism, and the occult are but a few of the featured attractions in the world of the ever-popular Pokemon phenomena. What version of Pokemon is Phil playing? Universal Life Church gave this advice to parents of Pokemon players. Seize their poisonous Pokemon paraphernalia and burn it. Hopefully they will come to see their sins and repent. I can just imagine trying to seize my kid's stuff and burn it. In breaking news, a man was burned to death on a bonfire he'd built in his backyard today. It's unclear how the man ended up on the bonfire. His three children, whilst all being home at the time, claimed to have seen nothing. Christian radio host... Ooh, remember radio? Christian radio host Rick Wiles tried to scare his young, highly tech-savvy radio listeners by telling them ISIS could use the Pokemon Go app to target real-life attacks on people and places in America. I have some disturbing news, Ms. President. 
What is it? Al Qaeda got Jigglypuff. No! Devil May Cry featured a devil trigger that let you become a devil while you combat demon hordes. The lead character is called Dante because the game was. This game has been made into a play, I kid you not. A real play in a theatre with actors and everything. It doesn't stop there. It's also been turned into a musical. But then again, literally everything gets turned into a musical these days. Thank you. We'll let you know. Next. I'm here to audition for the role of Satan in the lavish Broadway production of Satan is My Superhero. Right, and what makes you think you're right for this role? Because, I'll be honest, you're not quite the vibe I'm looking for. Hmm, good question, good question. Whilst I think you better answer your phone. My phone's not... No, seriously, you should take the call. It's very bad news. Hello? I understand. I'll be there right away. Tragic. Anywho, she won't be back. Now, I've made a lot of changes to the script, but don't worry, I've got plenty of copies for everyone. Okay, let's take it from the top of the third act, but Judas finally admits I'm the real star of the show and not him. The creators of the 2018 game Agony were... The game is about a soul that has ended up in hell due to a deal with the devil. Tricked into believing there is a way out of hell, the protagonist ends up releasing the beast from its shackles and starts Armageddon. Derek, are you playing with that beast's shackles again? No, Mum. You better not. We can't afford a whole Armageddon situation right now. I'm not an idiot. I wouldn't touch anything. Okay, good. Mum. What is it? Beast got out. The Japanese game Shin Megami Tensei mostly takes place after an apocalyptic demon invasion. Amongst the remnants of humanity, a cult of Yahweh and a cult of Lucifer are fighting to bring their respective gods to earth. There's suicide, cannibalism, homosexuality, the archangel Gabriel, a great flood, a cathedral that will bring a thousand-year kingdom. This game has got it all, and three different endings depending on whether the path you follow is with Yahweh, Lucifer, or your own. This game was big in Japan, but took a very long time to make its way out west. Okay, we've had a look at the game, and before we can release it in the US, you have to make some changes. Sure, like what? Everything! In After Party, you must get yourself out of eternal damnation by drinking Satan under the table. You can't play that game, it's got Satan in it! Oh no, Mum, we don't play it for the devil, it's the binge drinking we're into. Oh, that's all right then. The 2010 Dante's Inferno is obviously. Dante's Comedy. Lead character Dante fights his way through hell to rescue his true love. Kind of the opposite of what happens in the poem, but it's a video game. Who cares? In the lead-up to the release of this game, the publisher, Electronic Arts, produced fake Christian outrage and protests about the game. They offered up dates with hot models to promote the sin of lust. Apparently, they also rickrolled game bloggers with a box that, once opened, could not be stopped from playing Rick Astley until it was smashed with a hammer to promote the sin of anger. I don't like that Rick makes people angry like that. I do wish he'd stop. In Diablo, humanity is caught in the crossfire between heaven and hell. You must defeat many demons and eventually the Lord of Terror himself. In 2013, Guinness World Records named Diablo as the 44th best video game villain. Number one on that top 50 list was Bowser from Super Mario Brothers. The rankings are out. Do you want to know? Yes, of course. Tell me, where did I rank? 44th. 44? Yeah, it's great. No, it's not. Of course it is. It's better than 45. Imagine how crap they must feel. Who was number one? Maybe we'll talk about that on another day. Let's just get through this first. If you've created squirming offspring in the last 10 years, you've spent a night or two in a dimly lit child's bedroom hearing all about Five Nights at Freddy's, a video game about child murder and demonic possession. But the most painful part of this experience for many 21st century parents is the child explaining the horrifying images keeping them awake has never actually played or even seen the game itself. Such is the nightmarish reach of FNAF. Well, we've got up at 3am and nothing happened. We stood in front of the mirror 
and said Bloody Mary three times. And nothing happened. I did wet myself a bit. Yeah, me too. But nothing actually happened. Agreed. So what next? Five Nights at Freddy's? Are you insane? This game has had such an impact on children around the world, experts in the field have had to weigh in. Child and family therapist Jennifer Taylor said, I would not allow my children at any age to play it. The success of the franchise has evolved into novels, a Hollywood feature film in the works, as well as all the usual cosplay, toys and merch. This game has also spawned an entire industry of fan art. There are so many fan songs you can find top 40 lists dedicated solely to FNAF. There are fan-made animated YouTube videos featuring the characters from the game in an ever-expanding universe of fan fiction. What many people find most interesting about this phenomena is that its creator, Scott Cawthon, had dedicated his life up until that point to producing Christian video games and movies. Apparently an animatronic beaver in one of these family-friendly games copped such a slagging from critics for being too scary that Scott went into a depression. His health insurance was cancelled because he had suicidal thoughts. Scott has said of this time in his life he felt like... Either God didn't exist or God hated me. I don't know which was worse. But fortunately, Scott picked himself up, regained his faith in the man upstairs, took on board the criticism that his animatronic beaver was too scary, and turned it to his advantage. The good Lord helps those who help themselves. Which is a polite way of saying Yahweh doesn't do anything for you primates. ChristianToday.com asked, Was the pull of the dollar driving Scott's creation of Five Nights at Freddy's or was it the desire to glorify God? Had he given up on God because God wasn't making him rich? There are a few Christian entrepreneurs hoping their God will make them rich. The Reverend Ralph Bagley founded the Christian-themed game studio in Lightning Software and told the New York Times, We're going to hold the word of God up and illuminate the place. We're taking the land back from Satan. The company released a fairly successful first-person shooter in 2000 and a flop in 2001 and have not taken any land back from Satan since. Founder of the company Digital Praise, Peter Fokos, said, Satan is our only competition. He's out to seduce the world. He's out to seduce our children. Digital Praise released a number of Christian-themed video games up until they were absorbed by another Christian-themed company, Left Behind Games who then went on to be suspended from trading by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission under major fraud allegations. The company closed shop in 2011, having failed to seduce enough children. Let's go, boys! I'm going to take a short break from the show right now to talk about my sponsors and Patreon. I don't currently have sponsors or Patreon, but if you'd like to support the show, you can do that by buying my novel. It's called Chaos Machine by Judas Forley. It's available through Amazon. You don't need a Kindle to read it. Almost any digital device will do. Don't forget, Chaos Machine by Judas Falling. Now, back to the show. One-time astronaut and creator of the Ultima series of fantasy games, Richard Garriott, once received some hate mail stating, You are the satanic perverter of America's youth. Richard went and put that on a t-shirt. Who wouldn't? In 2010, the Bulletin in Philadelphia published a piece. Sounding the alarm about the rise in the number of satanically themed video games that target God and Christianity, invite players to make packs with the devil, and elevate Satan to hero status. Hero status. I like it. BibleReasons.com posted this statement about video games. We need more biblical men in Christianity. We need more men that will go out, preach the gospel, save lives, and die to self. We need more manly young men who will stop wasting their life and do the things that older Christians can't do. What is it these older Christians need these manly young men to do for them? Oh, you look like a manly young man. Excuse me? Oh, I could think of a thing or two a manly young man like you could do for me. What? You couldn't reach up there and grab me a can of beans, could you? I don't know why they put them up so high. Oh, uh, sure, yeah. Oh, yeah, reach for those beads, you manly young man. Game designer and Christian Jeff Wofford said this in his blog post titled Can a Christian Play Video Games? A game dishonors God when it leads you or others into temptation, sin, or unbelief. A game that features nudity or sexual content obviously offers temptation and promotes sin. Jeff has mostly worked on war games throughout his career, and I already know the question you have pursed on your lips right now, but Jeff answered that in the same post. Questions of violence are more subtle, 
much though not all video game violence is cartoonish. Even silly, rather than realistic or believable. So violence on screen cartoonish, boobs very real. I can't help myself, I have to give Jeff the floor one more time from the same post. A Christian fills his life with games in order to avoid the difficulty of life. And once he has begun, because the games compel him to. Are there just no females in Christianity? I don't think I've been a snowflake. That post was like 2018. Speaking of hip and with it people, evangelist Pat Robertson said, If you murder someone in cyberspace, in a sense, you're performing the act whether you like it or not. They don't just like it, Pat. They love it. All right, mate. Hands behind your back. You're under arrest. What? Why? I just witnessed you swallow at least 50 pills. I was just playing Pac-Man. Author of Frumpy Middle-Aged Mom, Dispatches from the Front Lines of Motherhood, Marla Jo Fisher posted on the Orange County Register. I truly believe that video games were created by Satan to turn otherwise normal children into his drooling, glassy-eyed stooges. Oh, you finally let a Christian woman speak. What next? You know, I thought for a nice change on this show all about Satan that we might hear from some actual Satanists for a change. Oh. Church of Satan's Reverend John H. Shaw had this to say about Grand Theft Auto. You get better cars, more money, you're more successful, you buy houses. That's satanic. Reverend Raul Anthony, also from the Church of Satan, said... Satanists tend to be very competitive and wish to excel at what gives them pleasure and satisfaction. So video games with a rich multiplayer component will attract Satanists. Do keep that in mind next time you're in a game. You may be giving massively multiplayer online pleasure and satisfaction to anonymous Satanists without even knowing it. Gross! Look, we could talk cartoonish violence, realistic boobs and Satan all day, but we have to wrap it up somewhere. So I'm going to leave the last word to the Reverend John Shaw. I love the fact that when you put a pair of pants on in GTA, they fit correctly. I also love a pair of correctly fitting pants. And that's why Satan is my superhero. If you've enjoyed this episode, please rate, review, subscribe, you know the drill. But more importantly, please recommend this show to just one person. I mean literally one person. Choose that person well. We're going to hold the world of God up and...